All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for review. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not the right gun. Ah! Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is going to be a review of the brand new Desert Tech Wolverine. Uh, this particular version is in uh, 223. And the gun has been out, what? Uh, it's been out maybe three or four weeks. So the gun came in a box like this. Inside the box, of course, we've got uh, some Desert Tech swag their qr code for the manual stickers oops yeah uh some stuff for dealers not for me um came with the uh, desert tech um 80 inch pounds torque wrench that is uh a torque key sorry nice uh torquing the uh barrel um the barrel retention nuts on the other side which i find that is a huge improvement over the Allen key that came with the uh, MDR MDRX. Thank you, Desert Tech. And then, of course, the uh, Gen 2 PMAG. Eh, Gen 2 is fine with me. I would point out that some of the older MDR MDRX guns did come with a nice uh, hard Pelican case with it. Not bad. Uh, it looks like a side eject MDRX. Um, same overall size, barrel length, location of the gas block, style of adjuster, the updated charging handles that carried over from the uh, MDRX. Safety selectors are uh, the same. And then of course it came with the Desert Tech polymer handguard. The chief clue that this is Wolverine would be the uh, <clears throat> lettering on the side of the frame if you're close enough to read either that or the receiver another indicator besides the lettering on the side of the gun is going to be that uh screws slash bolts on either side of the rifle that was characteristic in both of the previous generation of rifles um so as you notice this is got nothing and nothing you will also notice that on the uh, left side of the gun you will see three of these barrel retention screws. This one right here is the new addition right here. This is supposed to add more rigidity to the barrel. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the MDR, you got two, but now you have a third one. This is kind of reminiscent of the uh, prototype version of the MDR um, when it right around circa 2014. I don't know why they got rid of that in the production MDR uh, sidebar, Desert Tech. You're watching this can we have a video on the prototype mdrs also thank you for doing an ngsw vid i was noticing when i was watching the shot show coverage of the wolverine that uh all of the serial numbers for the wolverines in that shot show i think i saw three in the thousands so i'm just wondering if they saved or reserved serial numbers one through 99 for prototyping um or are there really a thousand of these already out far as fit and finish, uh, I can't tell if this is better than the previous gen guns, which to me is a good thing. Uh, trigger. The trigger is definitely better than the previous generations out of the box. Um, my trigger pull gauge says this is five and a half to six pounds. Uh, that was with four trigger pulls. Um, I also did compare this to a Tavor 7 that was at our local gun store at the time. The trigger on this, in terms of feel, is better than the Tavor 7, but I still think the RDB trigger is better from the factory than even the Wolverine. Safety. Okay, well, hmm. I think it's a little less mushy when selecting it off, but uh, it's only like a little bit. Did they improve it? Yeah, I'll, I'll acknowledge that. Ah. So, while it's not on here, it was on here when I took it to the range, this is their uh Raiden muzzle device and um that was on here when i got the gun also i point out that it was a lot easier to take that off uh, thank you desert tech 
um, than it has been to remove uh, muzzle devices off of the previous two generations. And then there seems to be some form of like crush washer or something like that that was behind the, the write-in muzzle device. So that made installing this uh, Cobalt Kinetics um, OSS brake uh, a lot easier and I didn't have to use my KNS shims. So again, that's another thing I'm gonna say, hey, thank you, Desert Tech. Uh, if you notice here, there is a new design or a pattern for the push button mag release. Uh, on the MDR, as you can see, it's uh, got a different pattern. Oh, and my favorite part, um, this gun is light. Um, one of my chief complaints about the MDR in 223 is it's, it's kind of heavy. Um, so the Wolverine, as it is weighed on my scale, is 7.56 pounds, uh, which is an improvement over the, the forward eject MDR, which came in at 8.87 pounds on my scale. Uh, and that's the forward eject version of the MDR. So <laughs> kudos to Desert Tech um, for really shaving some weight off this gun. At that weight, that gun is <sighs> lighter than my Hellion and with a far better trigger. It's uh, basically lighter than every bullpup I own uh, in 5.56 with the exception of say the RDB. The really cool part is this chassis since it's both intermediate and full power. This guy in 308 pretty much is number one right now in terms of weight for um, 308 bullpups. Uh, at seven, I think I just took out the uh, insert here and that's two ounces. So instead of it being 7.5, it would be like 7.43 uh, is what this weighed without the insert, which is what I'm expecting the 308 uh, to weigh when I get the kit. Gosh, that is a light 308 bullpup. Way to go, Desert Tech. Now let's see if it's any fun to shoot in that caliber. Going over the accuracy increase they did a bunch of things to the gun that is supposed to change its accuracy potential by at least up to uh, 30%. Of course, you saw on the other side, that would have been that third um, barrel screw. They also did some work to the uh, feed ramps and the interaction between the piston and the op rod um, are all things that they improved for hopefully more accuracy. The up to 30% accuracy increase is something I'm a little skeptical about. And I think it mostly applies to the 308 uh, as that was the previous generation of guns um, in 308 specifically seemed to have the most problem getting groups under two inches. Desert Tech's MDRX Rivalry Series puts all of the various barrel lengths of MDRX at a comfortable like 1.1 MOA with 69 grain federal gold medal match. And of course, they're showing the best groups for the session. But still, I was also able to score a one MOA five-shot group with the same ammo in the MDR uh, as pictured. 3X magnifier, and of course, yeah. the factory MDRX flash hider. Other user-submitted accuracy comes in at a similar 1.2 MOA for 73 grain burger. And then there's uh, another user on ARFCOM who was able to do a 1.4 MOA 10 shot group using American Marksman's 55 grain ammo. Uh, I might want to try that later. I like to use these user submitted reports to hone in on a barrel weight that the rifle likes. I don't really use these as a, a gauge for the overall accuracy of the gun because most guns tend to like or dislike certain weights or brands of ammunition. And once you find what it likes, I tend to stick with that. YouTuber Parrot Tacticals MDRX 1000 review um, show several MOA or better groups. When he was shooting the 77 grain federal gold medal match and 69 grain um, Nosler match, he was consistently sub MOA. So shooting it against his Daniel Defense AR. And then later he did that same uh, workup against the um, X95, and that was a those two were rounds that stood out in his workup that were consistently sub minute. Also of note, Lake City M or XM55 looks like a good ammo to keep around for cheap actors because it looks like it's right around at 1.5 MOA for both of his tests. That Iraq veteran 8888 
was shooting 0.88 MOA, same thing, 69 grain fed gold metal match. Um, I would also note there was a suppressor on that one. And of course there was a, a Hux work suppressor on uh, Parrot Tacticals um, MDRX, which may or may not contribute to the gun shooting sub MOA. I will test that maybe later, I hope. Range report. All right, target, six o'clock, sending it. Or not. What are the colors? That is hard to see. But I guess black is what we're using. I could not see my center dot, so all I had was the horseshoe reticle on the Arkin. You notice it's not on this gun anymore. That's why. And, uh, well, I also wasn't able to retrieve my targets. So I had to do the best I could for retrieving the information you're seeing in front of you uh, by using either my tactic cam, which also failed, or my phone. So I put 50 rounds of um, 223 through my Wolverine this weekend. Uh, accuracy was good. Typically I do two five shot groups and I try to average the, you know, between, between the two. And maybe if I feel like I, I'm feeling rich that particular range session, I might do 10 shot groups. Uh, but I was just not feeling it that day. While at the range, I did have three malfunctions. Uh, there were two failure to feeds in federal gold metal, uh, 69 grain, which I attribute to the magazine as I was using a, um, pre mag pool style, uh, magazine. Uh, I think it's a master mold. And it's only because I, my, uh, typical 10 round P mag was M I A at the moment. I also think that the, I, I, and I'm going to blame that on the magazine because like I said, I didn't have my normal 10 rounder with me. And I, I, I think most people trust P mags, um, master mold. I, uh, not so much. Um, but once I started seeing failure to feed malfunctions, I switched out to the other magazine I brought. I, I did have another failure, which was a failure to eject. Um, and I think that I can attribute I'll just throw the excuses out. I think I can attribute that to the gun being new and I had it on its lowest setting, normal minus. I do plan on retesting the Wolverine with the um, Federal 69 and 73 grain and of course the Barnes 85 grain. Also on my list of ammunition to test, I will be uh, probably testing the Varmageddon and the Nosler match 68 grain. Those are gonna be a couple ones I wanna try out just to see what they do. Of course, I'm gonna try out the uh, PMC x tac 55 grain, probably gonna also find the 62 grain, the Winchester M193, and of course, some variant of uh, Frontier. Of course, the uh, 55 grain as well. And of course, my current favorite ammunition is going to be the Fioki range dynamics. Whoa, that's that's one of them. That's not it though. That one. The Fioki range dynamics uh, VMAX 50 grain projectile. We'll see what those do in the Wolverine. Hopefully, uh, I can find something that's cheaper than Federal Gold Medal Match to shoot that's you know fairly accurate and call it today. I haven't decided yet, but I also may shoot this some of these side by side with the suppressor on the gun, just to show how much of a difference adding a Huxwork scan on the end of the gun um, increases your accuracy. Just to test a theory of mine. I'm hoping to be able to do a, like a part two of this in a month. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope I was able to provide at least some information uh, on the gun that you didn't know about. I will get to it in 308. Of course, stay tuned for maybe my next update for accuracy on this gun. Overall, though, I really do like the improvements, and my main gripe for this gun was the weight. Now that it's a lot lighter, um, I, I really don't have anything negative to say. I mean, clearly it's capable of at least 1.5 MOA when I can't see the dot. So maybe it's capable of shooting smaller groups than that. We'll see. Until then, you guys have a great day, and see you next time.